In this problem, we're told an archer shoots an arrow horizontally at a target 50 meters away. The arrow is aimed directly at the center of the target, but it hits 52 centimeters lower. What is the initial speed of the arrow? Right? So what we have is this person, right? And they're going to be shooting this arrow horizontally, right? So they're going to shoot it horizontally. It's going to go 15 meters, right? And they aim for the middle of the target. Imagine this right here is the middle. It's not drawn as exactly the middle. But what's going to happen is it's going to fall as, or it's going to go down as a result of gravity, right? And it's going to go down 52 centimeters from where it was supposed to hit in the middle, right? So how do we want to solve this problem? So the first thing you always like to do, or you should do for these, is just write down the given. But since this is a um, right, two-dimensional uh, kinematic problem, you want to write down the x-direction and the y-direction. right? So you want to write down the kinematic variables in the x that you know and the kinematic variables in the y that you know. So let's just start with the x. What do we know about the x? So keep in mind what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the initial speed of the arrow, but they tell us the arrow is fired horizontally, meaning there's only going to be a horizontal component of the velocity. So when they say the initial speed, they're just talking about the initial velocity in the x-direction right? Because it only is going horizontally. So that means since it's fired horizontally too, that means there's no velocity in the y, right? Since Because it's just only horizontal, no velocity in the y. So it's zero meters per second for the velocity in the y. What else do we know? We know how far it's going to travel in the x, right? So we know delta x is equal to 15 meters, right? We know that. Uh, do we know how far it travels in the y, right? So we know the change in the y, it's going to go down 0.52 meters, so the change, or 52 centimeters, sorry, which is 0.52 meters, but it's going to go down uh, 52 centimeters, meaning it's going to be negative 52 centimeters, right? Because it's going down. Up is positive, down is negative. So it's going to change in the y by going down minus 52 centimeters. And so let's just convert this. This is 50 or 0.52 meters, right? Because there's 100 centimeters for every meter. So just divide by 100 to convert. So minus uh, 0.52 meters. So we know that delta y. What else do we know? So we know the acceleration in the x is 0 meters per second squared because uh, usually, un unless they specify differently, the acceleration in the x is just 0. Uh, but we know the acceleration in the y is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And this is what's basically pulling down the arrow, right? The acceleration due to gravity, gravity is going to pull it down. So, and it's negative because it's going down. So we know that. And so let's think about how we want to solve this problem. So what we want to do is find v sub 0 x, okay? And so if we want to find that, what we need is another variable here. And so we can't find velocity, right? Because we, we're not going to be able to find the final velocity, right? But what we can find is the time. Because what we can do is use these variables over here, since we have three, to solve for the time, right? And the time it's going to take it to travel is going to be the same for both. And if we have time, what we're going to be able to do is plug it in, since we have three variables now, and solve for v sub 0x. So hopefully that makes sense, but uh, you'll see as we go on. But yeah, so what we want to do is solve for time here. Right, using these variables, and then we can plug it in here. So how do we find time? So we have the initial velocity y, we have the change in the y, and we have a. So the equation we're going to use is this one right here. And so keep in mind it says delta x replaceable with delta y. It doesn't make any difference. But if we use this one, right, delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. And so keep in mind this is going to be all in the y direction, so we're using y variables. So delta y equals, and then we can plug in and solve for t. So notice v sub 0 uh, and the y is 0 times t is still going to be 0. So delta y equals just 1 half a t squared. So now we can just plug in uh, delta y is minus 0.52, which equals 1 half times a, which is minus 9.8, times t squared. And we're solving for t, right? So multiply both sides by 2, and then divide by minus 9.8, right? So minus 9.8. So and then you're going to have t squared equals 2 times minus 0.52 divided by minus 9.8 and we can square root both sides that'll cancel that so t basically equals uh, the square root of 2 keep in mind these minus signs are going to cancel so it's just 2 times 0.52 right and then divide by uh, 9.8 And so when you do that, you're going to get t equals 0.32576 uh, seconds and so on. Uh, you can round however you want. I'm just going to say it's about 0.326, so 326 seconds, and that's going to be the estimation I use uh, when we plug it in here. So this is going to be the time, right? And so the time for both, right, is going to be the exact same, right? Because the time to reach the end of the interval is the same regardless in the x and the y, right? So this is 0.32 seconds now. And so now that we know this, right, we have three kinematic variables, so we can solve for v sub 0x. And so what we know, right, the equation we want to use is we know distance equals velocity times time, right? That's just a common formula. 
right? And since that's the case, right, keep in mind we're solving for velocity. So if we have how far it travels and for how long, we can find the velocity, right? And so keep in mind it's traveling constant. So the initial speed is going to be the same throughout. So it's all going to, it's not going to make a difference. So you can just basically take the distance and divide by the time, right? And so that's exactly what we're going to want to do. So, uh, right, because you can see also by, based on one of the kinetic equations, right, this is basically it. Delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared, except for a is 0, right? So you just have delta x equals v sub 0 times t, which is just d equals v times t, right? And that's exactly what we just did right here. So basically just use this equation, delta x equals v sub 0 times t, and then divide by t to solve for v sub 0, right? So t is going to be equal to delta x, which is 15 meters, and then divide by how long it takes. How long is it going to take? We just solve for that, right? to reach the end, so 0.326. So 15 divided by 0.326, if you go ahead and do that, you're gonna get t, or sorry, not t, I'm sorry, I didn't mean t, this is v sub zero, right? Because we're using uh, v sub zero, we're dividing by t. So it's delta x, right, which is 15 divided by 0.326. Sorry about that, I made a mistake. Uh, but yeah, say it's 15 divided by 0.326, and when you do that, that's gonna give you the initial velocity, right, which is what we want. It's just 46, 0 0.012, uh, you can round, right? So I'm just going to round to 46. So it's basically 46, uh, right? And then the units are meters per second, right? And I use the rounded value here. If you want to use the more exact value, you can. You might get a little bit of a different answer, but it's going to be about for, uh, 46. So V sub zero is going to be equal to 46 meters per second. That's going to be the initial speed of uh, the arrow, right? So this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.